Hello everyone, Computer Network Geek here. It's time for our next uh, IT tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to set up and do basic configuration of DHCP. And I'm also going to show you how to set up and configure WDS. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first before we install the DHCP server role, we want to make sure that this server has a static IP address. So let's go to the Network and Sharing Center. Go to Change Adapter Settings. Right click uh, your, your connection, click properties, go to IPv4 properties, and now we can set our IP information. So I'm going to set this server to 192.168.1.30, and the reason I'm doing that is I'm setting it outside of the range of, of my uh, local network. See, this virtual machine is going to be on the same subnet, but it's not going to be in the range of IP addresses of my local devices, just to make sure there's no conflicts. And then I'm going to set it to my hardware router, which is 192.168.1.1, and the DNS is also going to be on that same router. So once this is set up, go ahead and click OK. Close. And now you just want to make sure whenever you make an IP address change that your configuration was saved. So go to command prompt, type in ipconfig slash all, and there we go. DHCP is not enabled, so it's a static address, and it's set to 1.30, just like I said it. Submit mask is good, default gateway is correct, and DNS is correct. Okay, now we can go ahead and go to manage, add roles and features. and we can install the DHCP role. We don't need any features. Go ahead and click Next. Restart if required. Typically you don't have to restart to install DHCP, but I always check that just in case. And click Install. And that shouldn't take terribly long, it should take just a couple minutes. While it's doing that, I'll go ahead and explain to you real quick why we have to install DHCP to use uh, WDS. As you know, most of uh, the NICs that are in our modern uh, enterprise workstations these days support Pixie booting. And what the, the NIC will do is it'll go out and look for a server to get an image from, but it has to have an IP address to do that. So first they'll make contact and they'll get each other's MAC addresses, and next it'll get, a D, it'll get an IP address from DHCP. And there's an option in DHCP called Pixie boot, which enables it to do that. So that is why we have to have DHCP. You can also set in DHCP other options like uh, what DNS server, what default gateway to push out to the devices. We'll set those up at another time. And this looks like it's just about finished here. Okay, DHCP is installed, and we are ready to configure it. Once it's finished, go ahead and click DHCP Configuration. Click Next. And I'm, lo I'm logged in as the local administrator account, which is SPADE. So I have the authority to authorize this server to give out IP addresses. So once that's done, and you have the correct credentials, click Commit. Close. Close that. Now we can go to Tools and go to DHCP, and this will bring up the MMC DHCP console. And if I right-click the server here, you'll notice that it's already authorized, which is what that initial configuration step was. If ever for any reason you had to take down the DHCP for maintenance, all you'd have to do is just come in and unauthorize the server, and then you could uh, do your maintenance tasks or repairs. Next thing we'll want to do is we'll right-click IPv4, and click New Scope. Click Next. I'm just going to call it Test 1. And now your scope is your range of addresses that this 
DCP is going to give out. So I'm going to give it 192.1cx.1.30 to 196.8.1.40. So that's 10 IP addresses. Now, best practice when you're setting up a scope is you don't want to have a larger range than you need. If you only have 10, I, 10 devices, you only need about 10 to 12 IP addresses, just so you have a little flexibility. You don't want to give out 200 addresses for just 10 devices. That is way too much. It's just a, It just adds a little bit of security to it. Good practice. You might come across that in the Network Plus and the Security Plus exam, so watch out for that. We can just leave these at the default and click Next. Now, Exclusions. This is where we're going to exclude the addresses in that range that we don't want the server to give out. So, as you saw earlier, we set the server to 192.168.1.30. So, we'll exclude that. From the range, so it can't be given out. I mean, just verify that real quick. Always verify when you're setting up IP information because it'll save you a lot of trouble later. So I'm just going to verify it real quick. Yep, it is dot one dot thirty. Let's go ahead and click next. You can leave the least duration to the default. I usually don't change this. In some cases, it would be a good idea to, but just for a test lab, no reason to. And I'm going to set that to no, because we're going to set those up at a later time. Okay, click Finish. Activate the scope. And now, it can give out IP addresses. Okay, now that we've got our scope set up, we can go ahead and move on to the next step, which is setting up WDS. So I'm going to go ahead and close the DHCP console. Now let's go back to Tools. Scroll down. Windows Deployment Services. And let's right click and configure server. Go ahead and click Next. It is integrated with Active Directory because this server is a domain controller, so we can click Next. We can just leave that to the default. Now, of course, best performance would be a separate volume rather than the volume the server is running up, but since this is the only one we have, we'll just go ahead and click Continue. Yep, that's fine. We can click Next. And we want to respond to all client computers known and unknown. And it's going to do some initial configuration. Okay, now we have access to the WDS options. Okay, next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add our boot images and our install images. So what you'll do is you'll right click boot images, add boot image. And let me show you real quick what I did. What I did was I installed the VirtualBox guest editions and then I shared a folder that contained a Windows 8.1 Enterprise ISO I extracted using 7-zip. That's it here. Now the two files you want, they're in sources. And they're going to be called boot.wim and installed.wim. And what those are is those are Windows images. What I did after I connected the shared folder to the VM here is I copied over those two files to my desktop. And now I'm going to use WDS to add those. So I'll browse the location, boot, and what the boot.wim is, is the actual Windows setup that installs Windows. And then the install.wim is the image that the installer uses to install. 
So we'll click next. Windows setup, that's correct. Oh, and make sure that you're using 64-bit versus 32-bit uh, because the images all have to match up, of course. So click next after that. Click next again. And it's going to extract and add that boot image to WDS so it can be used. This can take that's a, quite a bit of time depending on how powerful your computer is and how fast your storage is. So I'll take a quick break from here and as soon as that is done I'll come right back to you. Okay, our boot image was added successfully. Now we can click finish and we can add our install image. So we'll right click install images, add install image. You have to create an image group, so we'll just leave it to default image group one. Browse to file location and that will be the install.wim. Click next. It's Windows 8.1 Enterprise. It's called correct. Click next. Next again and it'll do a pretty lengthy integrity check on this because this is the actual image that's going to be used to install Windows. This can take a, around an hour or so, so I'll take another break. As soon as it's done, uh, I'll come back and we'll finish this up. Okay, so our install image was added successfully. Uh, it passed the integrity, uh, the integrity check. It actually, <laughs> it actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. It only took about 10 minutes. I, I, I haven't used deployment services in a while. The last one I had to run it on, it was on a server that had just like 2 gigs of RAM and it was just a dual core processor and it just crawled. The storage was so slow. But actually, in fact, it only took about a minute for the boot image to be added and it only took about 10 minutes for the install image to be added. So it actually wasn't that long. So now that that's added... Okay, let me go ahead and show you something real quick. The Windows Deployment Services requires a service uh, to function. And sometimes it doesn't always start automatically. So I'll just go ahead and show you that real quick. Uh, right click your start button, uh, go to run, go to services.msc, click OK. Scroll down until you find the Windows Deployment Services server. And make sure that, that is started because that is required to run WDS. Sometimes it doesn't start automatically, so you'll just have to go into the services console and start it. Now, when we configure WDS, it made an option in DHCP so that DHCP can give out IP addresses to Pixie clients. I'll go ahead and show that to you real quick. So we'll close WDS, go to Tools, DHCP, expand out the console here. And under Server Options, there you'll see it. Option 60 for Pixie Client. And now, now that we have this set up, we can boot Pixie Clients uh, and use the images we've installed into WDS. So I'll go ahead and show you that next. Okay, so what I did is I set up a virtual machine. I'll go ahead and show that to you. It's going to be Windows 8.1 Enterprise. And let me just show you the settings for that real quick. 2 gigs of RAM should be sufficient. Uh, go ahead and go to Processor. Make sure PAE and Nix is enabled. Default acceleration should be fine. And next, go down to Network and make sure you're set to Bridged Adapter. This is crucial. It has to be able to contact the Pixie server so it can load the image and begin the install. So once that's all set up, go ahead and start it up. Press F12 quickly because it doesn't give you much time, and then press L to boot LAN. Now it's going to go out to DHCP and try and grab an address. Shouldn't take terribly long. Now you'll get a prompt to press F12. Tap F12, and it's going to boot the the boot image, which will bring up Windows Installer. Okay, looks like it's working.
And this is going to behave very similar to, uh, for example, if you boot it to an installation DVD, but slightly different. Okay, once it comes up, make sure your keyboard and, and language are correct, just like on a normal install. Click Next. And now you're going to have to provide domain credentials to authorize this install. So that's going to be my administrator account. And then you have to type up the full domain, which in this case is netlab.local. So your administrator account at your domain, and then the administrator password. Okay, and then you're authorized. And there is our 8.1 Enterprise. We can click Next. And from this point, it just behaves just like a normal install. And I'm going to stop here, but if I wanted to continue an install from this image, I would just continue just like if I booted to an installation disk and go through all the normal options, and it would go through the install, and there we go. We'd have 8.1 Enterprise installed and ready to go. And after that, I would just join it, join it to the domain and it would be a workstation I could administer and manage. So that's basic DHCP setup and uh, setting up and configuring WDS and deploying WDS. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and comment below.